If I gave you freedom, will you think of Egypt? Will you be okay? Or will you think of leaving? You got my heart grieving. Why you not believing? Blood on your doorpost, don't you see me bleeding? Love is in my voice, don't you hear me pleading? My heart about to bust, you can't feel it beating. You don't trust me, I need miracles, but you rush me to do miracles. You just give me words, you too lyrical, you in your own head. You too spiritual, supposed to be a short trip, took your whole life, cause you always trip, when it's not in sight, you can't see the land, you got your own route, I can't give you plans, you just go south, then I bring you back, and give you me again, then you turn your back, for another sin, you should know me now, you know you owe me now, I kick the devil out, he's still running around, what do that say, I'm really mercy, I'm really grace, to let you hurt me, I can kill you, I can murk you, I wanna heal you, but you curse me, I forgive you, I wanna live with you, I wanna heal you, so I can live with you. YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, Zoom especially. Thank you guys for joining us for another Bible study where we all about lifting up Jesus, what he's about, the things that he's doing. Uh, for the last week, well, last Sabbath, we actually got into time. We saw some charts and things like that. And tonight, I want to talk about his time up. <laughs> right, you know, so... uh I hope to, well, tonight, I said tonight, I feel like it's tonight. I'm in this room feeling like it's nighttime. <laughs> well, today, for Sabbath, we're going to be talking about it's time up. And the reason I want to come from that place, well, there are several reasons I want to come from that place. And I just want us to understand that uh, with God, timing is everything, as we have been seeing, guys. Y'all been seeing that too? Timing is everything. Timing is everything. And what I want to do first is I want to go. I want to ask a question, actually. Hey, Zoom. How you guys doing? You guys feel like talking this morning? Or y'all, y'all and y'all feelings? <laughs> who feels who feel like talking this? You hear that? Feel like talking. Who feel like talking? No, nah, um, but serious on a serious note, I got a question though. What is the difference between a stopwatch and a timer? What's the difference? The stopwatch stop is the stops the time. <laughs> All right, so the stopwatch <laughs> stops time. Well, you actually need somebody to actually stop the watch, right? Right. Okay. The stopwatch is like you, it's like you're clocking time, like you're trying to time something. The timer is like it's like a, a countdown or something. Right. Yeah. And you getting there? You getting there? You pressing in? Uh huh. So the timer, the timer is like you only got forty five seconds to do this. Anybody ever took a, like a time test? Huh? You said a math one. <laughs> um, how do you feel when you take a time test, opposed to having all the time in the world? How do you feel? You said high anxiety. So, so if you got a hundred questions to do in 
an hour, right? And they'd be like, 10 minutes left, and you only on question 50. Why y'all acting like y'all know what I'm talking about, man? <laughs> hey, start putting A, B, C, D, D, C, A, B, D, C, B, A, A, B, C, D. <laughs> you just start going wild with it, right? <laughs> but when you, but when they say you don't have a timer, right? Take as long as you need. What happens then? Take as long as you need to take this test. What's up, man? You how you doing? I can't hear nothing y'all saying. No stress. There's no sense of urgency, right? Take as long as you want. Y'all hear what I'm where I'm going with all this? What I'm saying? Take as long as you need. Take as long as you want. Get comfortable. I like that. Get comfortable. So there is a big difference between uh a stopwatch and a timer and the reason i say that is because which one are we on we're on a timer right which one do we usually act like we own We be acting like we're on that stopwatch <laughs> because the stopwatch say, I got this much time to do this, stop, go, stop, go, stop, go, whatever. You know, that's how we function. But when you're on a timer, right, when you're on a timer, give me one second. I got, I forgot to turn this off. loud washer all right so so the way god want us to operate is like we have the timer remembering um when he told abraham hey for 400 years this gonna happen and then you know something else gonna happen after that y'all remember y'all know what i'm talking about right i want to read something real quick that i love i love this verse actually let's go to galatians 4 real quick so go to galatians 4 galatians 4 and Galatians 4, I'm going to read, uh, let me see. I want to say 4-4, four, four, but I might go before that. Yeah, yeah go, I'll go Galatians. All right, I'll start in one. What I am saying is that as long as an heir is under age, he is no different from a slave, although he owns the whole estate. The heir is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by his father. So also, when we are, were under age, we were in slavery under the elemental spiritual forces of the world. Right. But when the, time, the set time had fully come, God sent his son. Born of a woman, born under the law to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship. But when the set time had fully come. So there's a set time that God had for the son to be revealed. And when he came, of course, we already know what happened. We know the whole story. We know they didn't accept him, reject him, all these kind of things. But pay attention that there was a timer set for when Jesus shows up. There's a timer set. There's It's not a stopwatch. So when Jesus showed up, it could have been a stopwatch. If y'all remember what we talked about, it could have been a stopwatch. Because you remember in Daniel 9, we talked about if the people would have accepted Jesus, what would have happened, y'all? What would have happened if the if the Israelites would have accepted Jesus? Uh, we wouldn't be talking about it today, right? So if they would have accepted Jesus, prophecy is filled up, then the, the watch what? What does the watch do? Stop. Thank you, Tamika. <laughs> the watch stops if you are so. Ah, 
So God was about to stop somebody's watch. His name was Hezekiah, right? Yeah, I remember that. His watch was about to stop. What happened? Nobody knows what happened. All right, so watch this. Right. Hezekiah, God was about to stop. He said, go until Hezekiah put his house in order. I'm about to stop his watch. Hezekiah repented. Right? He repented and said, oh, Lord, remember when I did this, 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 this. Right? And then the Lord said, all right, I'm going to give you 15 more years. And then we kind of see how his life ended up and things like that. He didn't even care about it, the next generation. So what I'm saying is when God's God has this thing called a bilateral covenant, it's like a marriage, right? If you do this, I'll do that. If you do this, I'll do that. Has anybody ever uh, been in a relationship that they stopped the watch on? <laughs> Let's talk about that for one second. So you've been in a relationship where you had to stop the watch. Did you stop to watch the first sign that you saw something wrong in the relationship? So you didn't stop to watch when you first saw something was wrong. When did you stop it? Way too late. <laughs> you said way too late. <laughs> so you didn't stop it when you first saw something wrong. But you stopped it at a certain point. Do it. Do anybody remember when they said, man, this is the last straw. Why y'all not talking? Yes, yes, yes. So you were right. This is the last straw. But it had to be a bunch of things leading up to where you say, man, this is a wrap. It's over with. I can't do this no more. Last week we talked about. Jesus giving the Israelites a certain amount of time, right? Yeah, who remember how much time Jesus gave the Israelites to be a light to the world? Okay, keep going. A little bit more than that. Right? But yeah, that was yeah, that was in Daniel. But how long did he take? He gave them a jubilee calendar when he came out of the Exodus and all this. How long did he give them to be a light? Who remember from last week? That it is right there. He gave them 30 Jubilee cycles. That is 1,470 years. <laughs> That's almost identical to saying 10 years of your life you gave to somebody who didn't deserve it. They took. You ever heard somebody say, this person took all my 20s? <laughs> right? <laughs> I wish I would have known what I know now. I wouldn't have let this person run me down in my 20s. <laughs> But then you got to a point where you like, this is not going to change. And then he did something else. Then he said, you know what? And we talked about this last week. I'm going to go over here to the Gentiles now. So whosoever is willing, forget bloodline, forget all that. Whosoever is willing, I'm going to use them. And he gave them a certain amount of time. How much time he gives them, y'all? Let's do it. Thank you. Now we on track. Everybody brain waking up now. You got that coffee in you now, sis? The coffee waking you up? <laughs> Somebody say the story of my life. Well, you got to you gotta become more like God. If this is the story of your life, it's time to become more like God. You got to be, you got to know when the timer and when to stop. Timer, stop. You got to know because guess what? Did you know that someone can lead you to hell? For, all right, let me take let me take hell out. Someone can lead you to destruction. And we know this in all kind of environments, right? Just say someone say, hey, get in the car with me. We're going to go steal something. It wasn't on your mind, but because you are naive and gullible. You get in the car. Y'all hearing what I'm saying right now? How many naive and gullible things have you done that somebody else led you into that wasn't even on your mind and heart? You got to think about that. 
So when I so when I say what when I say things like someone else can lead you to destruction, meaning if you don't have a stopwatch on something in your life, pretty soon it's going to be destroyed. Your mind can be destroyed. Everything. Why am I saying all this? Because we got to get deep. We got to get deeper into it now. I want to go to. Uh, uh, my bad. Luke 12. Luke 12. I want to go to Luke 12 and we're going to read 13. We're going to start in 13. Luke 12. I'm going to start in 13. Yeah. All right, Luke 12, 13. We're going to start with verse 25. No, I mean, my bad. Luke 12, 13. Why am I starting at 25? My brain, I need some coffee and I don't even drink it. <laughs> so watch this. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, man, who appointed me a judge or arbiter between you? Then he said to them, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And then he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, <laughs> this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store up my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years, self. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. Right? Thanks. So, Jesus is, is warning them a bit about greed and a, having an abundance of possessions. That's the warning he just sent out. He threw that out there. Let's talk really quick about this guy. This guy had a stopwatch mentality. Y'all got that what I just said? Cuz he's saying I will cuz I ain't going to go I ain't going to the next one. I'm going to tear down big barns, my big barns, and I'll build bigger ones and I'll store up food for myself and I'll, you know, save everything and I'll be straight. When we watch this, is what I'm about to say, when you understand a timer is on your life and you don't have control of being a, the stopwatch, do you think of self? All right, let me let me make this uh, plain and clear. What is a wheel? What's a wheel? Yo, what's a wheel? W I L L. All right, so this is a document that states what you want to happen when you go on. Is the will a selfish thing or selfless? Depends on how you put the assets. So, so when people get their wills in order, it's really about others. Y'all get that? Because you can just say, bury all of it with me. Do, have it, do, do people do that? Is that a normal thing people do? Say, bury all my money with me or give it to this person or somebody else? So people you care about, you start to focus on because your timer is starting to tick away. Y'all y'all, with me right now? Making sure. So the timer's ticking away and you say, I can't think about myself now. I got to think about others. What did this guy in this story just do? Just think about himself. <laughs> what was what was his language? What did he say? I, I, I'm going to build bigger barns. I'm going to be good. I'm going to be straight. It's the reason I'm going here with this with this story. Let's keep reading real quick. But God said to him, you fool, this very night, your life will be demanded from you. 
then who will get your get what you have prepared for who? <laughs> um, do we have honest people right now? We have un we so we believers and we're honest, right? Let's let's do an inventory real quick. Let's just do an inventory. Let's keep it all the way real. Let's keep doing inventory. Look over the past month of your life, just the last month, and be real with yourself. I don't, I'm not asking you to act, tell me. Have you genuinely lived a selfless life or a self-centered life? Just the last month. I ain't asked for the years. Just the last month. Just keep it real. If you want to answer, you can. That's cool. But think about what I just asked. What have where have all of your decisions been made from? Y'all got it. Y'all good. I'm gonna go, I'm I'm going somewhere with everything I'm saying. Y'all know we're gonna bring it all together in a little bit. So think about <laughs> if God say, "Hey, hey Israel, I need you to go be a light." I need you to go somewhere and do something and it's going to be for others. So if if we as believers can look over our last month and see where all of our decisions have come from or derived from, if we keep it real with ourselves, is it from what God wants or is it a mixture? Guess what? I'm about, I'm about to say something. It's, it, it's the true uh, uh, wounds from a friend can be trusted. So think about I'm not saying it's to no particular person. If you have a mixture of me and God battling for uh, to rule and reign of, of the decision making, that really means you're lukewarm. Y'all understand what I just said? I'm, I want to just give a raw truth. If you know how we say, um, die daily, we say all these slogans, y'all know what I'm talking about. Die daily. I die to myself, die to how I feel and all this. But then we get into the day, the actual day in the process. And we start to make decisions on how we feel on like what's going on. We respond to everything of how we feel and what's going on. You see, when you have surrendered everything to Jesus, everything, that means all my decisions come from there. All of them. So my whole life now, I was just talking. To, I was just talking, even with my wife. I said none of our none of our decisions, and I just said this to her last night. None of our decisions can be based on what we want for our kids, what we want for ourselves, what we want for you know our dreams, goals. None of our decisions can be that anymore. Because guess what? When you coming into something, guess what? It's usually you. You're like, oh, I want to build me a house. I want to do this for me. I want to. When does it stop? It's the hardest thing to stop. Because guess what? When you build the house, now you have to maintain it, especially if you didn't pay for it outright. So your whole life is wrapped up now in you. And this is what G this is the parable right here that Jesus is telling this dude. He said, look, I want a big house. Basically. I want the food at my disposal of whatever I want to eat. I'm, I'm trying to help us get into a, the selfless phase and just stay there. If we stay in the selfless phase, it means God can quickly talk to us, quickly tell us what to do, because he'll know we'll quickly do it. But when we're mixed and we're lukewarm and stuff, that means that's almost like uh, y'all know uh, it's uh, it's very hard to make a horse do what you a wild horse do what you say. Y'all know that, right? So it takes a lot of time and you can be get even injured trying to get a wild horse to, to be tamed. So to tame the flesh is one of the hardest things in the world to do. But watch this. If you practice selflessness and, no, and none of your words is like, I feel like this and I feel like that. And I, you know, I don't like this and I don't like you. 
complaining and murmuring becomes it ceased to exist. Who likes to be around somebody that complains and murmur? Who likes it? Who who is a complainer or a murmurer? <laughs> So let's keep reading real quick. Verse 21, Luke 12, 21. This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich towards who? How much do you have stored up for you? And how much now, what do you have that's stored up for the kingdom? Y'all know we talk about faith, right? Faith without what is dead. So show me your faith, right? Just by talking. Can you show somebody your faith just by you talking or you show them your faith by what you do? Ah, uh, so if the last month I've been doing me. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I believe. I believe in me. I believe that. <laughs> Yo, I just want to help real quick. Look, I'm just trying to help us. That's it. I want to help us see what God, look, when we get before him, everything that we thought was him, he going to be like, nah, that wasn't me. You hear what I said? Everything we thought was him. What does the Bible says? Have the mind of who? Develop what who mindset? No, that's right. Develop, yeah. Develop means I'm a I'm a do, I'm a intensely do this every day. So develop means I have to like practice having a a, a Christ like mentality. So every decision, all the planning, everything I commit to is because Christ committed to it. He planned things out this way. Let Let's keep reading because this goes. Now, this is the black and white part of it, because when you stop focusing on you, there's something that's going to come in and it's called worry. Now you're see, watch when you stop focusing on taking care of yourself, you start to worry how you're going to be what taken care of. Y'all just got what I just said, right? I just want to pay attention. I want, I want us there. Then Jesus said to his disciples, he told, he told a crowd this story. Then he turns to his disciples and tells them this. Therefore, I tell y'all. <laughs> this is, oh, I got to go back. Verse 13. So I want to, I want to pull it all in real quick because we talking about God's timing. Someone in the crowd said, teacher, tell my brother to divide his inheritance with me. He's worried about money. Right? Y'all see it. Now watch down here. He turns after he told a parable, he turns to the disciples and says, hey, look, y'all. I'm going to tell y'all, don't worry about life. Don't worry about your life. Who can hear it, though? Who can hear that? Don't worry about your life. What you would eat. Well, who was worried about what they was eating? The dude. What you going to wear? Life is more than food and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens. They don't sow or reap. They do not store. Um, They do not have a storeroom or born. Yet God feeds them. Quick question. Who has faith? Say it. Say it out your mouth. I have faith. How much? <laughs> How much faith do you got? So everybody's born with a measure of it. I'm just asking, how much do you have? Great faith, not enough. This is where I'm going. If if God said, hey, son, huh? go ahead. I ain't hear you. Oh, okay. If God says, hey, look, son, I got you. I got you. Has God told all of us that? 
You muted me. I'm muted. You muted me. So God has told all of us, don't worry. You keep muting me. <laughs> you, you muted me. Hold on. Bro, you know you muted us? No, no, I, I'm not the host. <laughs> it's all right. I, it's right, right, right. I know. I was just telling her. I saw it on there. But okay. so listen to what I just if you tell your child, I got you, don't worry. And they come to you every single day and ask you the same question. Does that get on your nerve? Yes. What we going to eat today? Yes. What we going to eat? I'm I'm thirsty. I'm going to finish this out real quick. He said, who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? So you cannot be the stopwatch. There is actually a timer on your life. There's a timer. There's not a stopwatch. So in this time that we have, we're either going to say everything is yours, Lord, or some things is yours. And when we say everything is yours, our life starts to reflect it. If everything is God's, whatever he say, do with it, that's what we do with it. All right, now I'm going back. Let's go over to... Um, Matthew 24. Yeah, Matthew 24 is like when Jesus is telling everybody about how he's going to do things and things of that nature. But there's something I want to point out in 42. I'm going to start in 42. All right, I'm going to read 37. I mean, um, 36 first. But about the day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the son, but only the father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it would be coming at the son of man. Then Jesus describes how it was in the days of Noah. For in the days of Noah, before the flood, people were doing what? What were they doing? Eating and drinking. Marrying and giving in marriage. Up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until what? So Noah went in, the, went in the ark seven days before. God told him when. What if God is saying seven days before I send the, the golden censer on earth, I'm going to tell the 144,000? Who's going to know? Who will know? That's right. So there was silence for seven days. There probably was like eating and drinking and, and, and being merry out there for those seven days, right? And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came. Two men will be in a field and one will be taken in the other left. Two women will be grinding with the hand mill. One will be taken in the other left. 42. Therefore, keep what? I'm going to stop right there. We need to talk about that for one second. What it means to keep watch. Who knows what is a, what is a watchman? Someone who's aware. Someone who's what? Aware of the surroundings. Okay. What's, what's a watchman? The coming and the going and... Okay. They're awake. They're awake. Right. So a watchman... So when you're asleep in your bed... And someone needs to watch the um, community, for instance, right? You may have two guards at the gate. Those are called watchmen. So while you're asleep, these two people that's at the gate is actually watching over to protect you. All right, go ahead, babe, real quick. All 
I can't hear you. No, I was trying to recall my question. Oh, okay. You good? Yeah, okay. I remember. Um, the first one was you said. I'm sorry. Okay. Should we have something stored for the kingdom or give everything daily? Yeah, because you had uh, mentioned, you know, what are we storing up for the kingdom or something to the effect of we should have something for the kingdom. But my um, my mindset of my understanding was, you know, when we wake up daily, we give up our best. We give everything. We, we essentially should be empty and have lived that day, you know, as if we have nothing more to give, you know, give everything of ourselves. So when you say have something stored in heaven or what we have stored for the kingdom, I'm, I don't think I can understand that sentence. So and then, you, what you saying, when we get up every day, we give God our best. Is that what you mean? Right. So what is that, though? What is our best? Exhibiting his characteristics. How do we do that? all right all right so i'm gonna i'm gonna say something real quick the egyptians deceived the israelites by working them real hard y'all understand what i just said he the, the the israelites was worked so hard that they like thinking about god on a daily basis was not their focus because this is how i know when god showed up and god was trying to set them free who what did they complain about No, I'm talking about in Egypt. So God shows up and like, hey, rest. Y'all take a rest day. What did they complain about? Remember when Pharaoh said, you stopping the people from working, Moses? And the people got mad? Not huh? About not working. That's right. So God shows up and say, hey, I'm about to set y'all free. Y'all going to be my people. Y'all going to work for me. Yeah, everybody under, do everybody understand what I'm actually saying right now? So when he shows up, they were so engulfed in working for the Egyptians that even God setting them free, they still was like, I'm used to this way of life. So nothing else really even matters. I hear what I'm saying. This is our, our identical process right now. You know, for many, for thousands of years before, like 100 or 200 years ago, probably, uh, I just say 100 years ago, there was not this thing called a 40 hour work week. Y'all know that, right? Y'all know, like, people grew their own food. Do, do y'all know this? I know we so far removed from it. <laughs> like, it wasn't like how it is. So we wasn't overworked and tired and, you know, in the way we are now by someone else that means i was growing my food for my family my community whatever right i'm growing my food i'm building my own houses i'm y'all notice like 140 years ago probably this is how it was so watch what i'm about to say now though what what do we have now we have someone working us someone providing the food for us Yeah, who can hear it? Y'all can hear it. And God is coming in right now telling us, no, I need you to actually learn how to work for yourself, build your own houses, plant your own gardens, do your own things. When it <laughs> we we're so overworked that God setting us free is a is a is a a, a point of contention. Think about you like I have to you ever heard somebody say I have to work I have to go to work or I have to do this I have to I have to I must that means someone else has determined what you must do not God when God say no I'm gonna set you free I'm gonna give you some food you might not even like the food you're not even gonna be used to the type of food I'm about to give you you're not look man and quail that's what I give my you're not gonna be used to it 
And because you're not used, to, y'all ever seen somebody you 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 say, "Look, I'm gonna I'm gonna cook you a vegan meal," right? <laughs> right? They could be so used to chicken and everything else that the vegan meal don't sound appetizing. Y'all hear exactly what I'm saying, please? Y'all, let me know if y'all y'all understanding what I'm really saying. This is what our this I'm trying to help us to see where we're at and where God is trying to get us. He's trying to get us into a place to where th- what everything that we don't like and uh, is uncomfortable uncomfortable becomes what we love and what we do and what we desire. That's what He's trying to do. The biggest obstacle is every single system you have as you have allowed yourself to be called into grabbed into so when you allowed yourself to be in, ingrained in every system where i must i have to go to work and make this money and i have to do this and i have to do that if that's it's hard for god to set you free let me say it better it's impossible now watch this remember they say with god all things are possible God would do everything possible to save us, but the one thing he would never do. Thank you. See, (laughs) because then there's no love there. So he's trying his best to say, I have something better for you that that works your interior out. You know know when it says, and he'll give you the desires of your heart, heart. So when he give you the desires of your heart, that just means that you you are now in line with his. They never can get in line with his heart. Very few humans can get in line with God's heart on a consistent basis. That's just that's the that's the downward spiral of sin. So the exact same thing he tried to do with them, he's trying to do with us right now. Anybody on here have their own food right now? They grow their own food every day. They eat from their their themselves right now. Anybody anybody on here eat from themselves right now? They grow their own food every day. They don't have to go to no stores. Huh? No. Who you depend on then? Publix. Let me ask a question because I'm trying to break it down simple. I'm trying to just give us baby food today. So Publix is your Lord. Publix is your provider. Walmart, your provider. Let's let's say it out loud so we can be changed. Let's just come on, y'all. Come. With, so who provides your food? Huh? That's the name of the store. You know, I know people want to say God because they go out and work for themselves and all this kind of stuff. We want to say that, but it's not. Is it the truth? No. No. We want to say it, but it's not the truth. What he said, if you hold to my teaching, right, you really my disciples, then what? You will know the truth and it'll set you free. So if we know that our provider is we don't even know where it comes from. Right. So you can be put in like you can you can be put anything in you because your provider can do whatever before you get it. Y'all hearing what I'm saying? I'm talking to all of I'm even talk, I'm talking to myself. gives it to the farmer and the farmer gives it to the public. No, that's not true. Oh. Yeah, that's not true. So I'll provide who's our provider for our food. So you grow you you grow all your own food. Even though I say I go to work and I can afford all these things, when I see my total at the end of my bank account for the month, 
I see that I'm over the amount I made for the month. But he's, I still have what I need. So I know that it's God. Supernaturally, I know it is. Let me ask a question. Where do you get it from? Where you get your food from? The grocery store. Oh. Listen to what I'm asking. What did God want his people to become? Say it again. I'm asking questions because I need us to understand how God operates opposed to how we feel about God. See, there's an image of God we have and there's the real Jesus. The image is he's providing, he's doing this, he, 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 he. But what about the starving people in other places? So he's not doing it for them? See how we see how I'm trying to show Americans we're self-centered. We are. And we think we worship Jesus. No. There's there's little babies dying in somewhere else while we over here stuffing our face saying God gave me all this. No, he didn't. Because that's called favoritism then. Is that correct? Wouldn't that be favoritism? God feeds me. I'm in the 5% of the whole nation. I'm in the whole uh, world. He feeds me. He takes care of me. Or am I really an Israelite in Egypt, Egypt? Until we get to the truth, we can't get free. That's, the, that's what I'm getting to. That's the heart of the message. Time is running out to get free. Time is running out. Because when it runs out, we are the Egypt, we are the Israelites. We are the complaining and murmuring. We don't even want to eat a vegan meal right now. And if that's all God gives you in the desert, you're going to complain. Who can eat the same thing for a month? Who likes variety? Everybody likes variety in this nation. Oh, I had that yesterday. I don't got no taste for that today. I... I'm I'm trying to help today. I want us to have a different mindset. We are not the chosen people of God who we think we are. That he just looks out for this little nation here and everybody else in the world. Like, I don't know what he's doing for them, but I know what he's doing for me. No, you're work, you're going out, you're working, you're making money, and, and, and you're going to provide what you want. It, most of the stuff is not even what we need. If you look in your house, a lot of stuff is not what you need. It's what you want it. If you could spend 10 on a little thing or whatever, $10 on something that don't that is insignificant for what? Decoration. Is that right? Is that something you need it or want it? So how many decorations you got? I'm trying to help us. That's all I'm trying to say. And if, in this, the, the help that we need is not always the help we want. We can't. I'm concerned about our souls. Like we're going to stand before a God as self-centered Americans, not as kingdom minded citizens. And if we don't understand that, that's why I have to say it. If we don't understand it, it's on you after I say it. Just like it's on me after I say it. It's all on us. Self-centeredness keeps us out of his kingdom. Nobody, nobody here in this country, very few people here in this country care about what's going on in the other parts of the world. Very few. God got me. And every testimony is a feeling testimony. Every testimony is what God did for me. What about what how he said other people free? All right, I'm gonna keep reading. He said, therefore, for 2442, therefore keep watch because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. If you keep in watching, you're awoke and everybody else sleep. That means I need to be shooting some, some bullets up in the sky. If you shoot enough bullets in the sky, would that wake up the whole camp? Yeah. 
Whatever I tell you in the dark, what do you say do? If I tell you in the dark, do what? What do you say do? Shout it from the rooftop. Blow a trumpet. Let the people know to get out of self. And that's what he's shouting. The time is up. And, and if your goal is, I just need to take care of this for the next 30 days, that's not God. Go through your house. See how many things you actually need compared to the things you bought that you wanted. Just look. It's there before us. I have so many things I bought that I wanted. That's truth. I'm able to be truthful with myself because I want to be free. Grocery stores provide my food. You see how freeing that is? Because you start somewhere and then you're able to go somewhere. Lord, this is where I'm at. This is the, you know how they say this is my truth, whatever, my truth. This is really where I'm at. I, I don't even know how to grow the food, Lord, but I guess what? I'm willing to learn. I don't know how to do this, but I'm will, I don't know how to build nothing. I'm willing to learn. I don't know how. It's a difference. God provides. God does this. God. No, no. You faith without works dead. And you ain't working for him for real. And you keep saying he providing. You don't even work for him for real. You ain't committed your entire life to him. You commit your life to yourself and your family. That's not him. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know on what day the Lord will come. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what time of the night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you must, so you also must be what? Bishop always say this. If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. If the Israelites had the right mindset when they came out of Egypt, guess what? They would have been like, oh man, we all, we learned all these skills in Egypt. Let's go out here and build our... You see, you see the attitude, what perception does. Oh, man, we free now. Let's go do our thing. We can build whatever we want, do whatever, you know, however the Lord tell us. We can do all that now. It's a difference in your attitude, though. If your attitude is like, I'm comfortable how I am because I know my Lord is this blah, blah. It's just talk. Because when I look deeper into your life, you don't do nothing for the Lord. You got a lot of speech. But when I look deeper into your life, you ain't doing nothing for the Lord. Not for him. Your life ain't centered around him. It's really centered around you. Self-centeredness is what we call it, is what the Bible says. Just like the guy who was building the bigger barns, it's all about him. Guess where he said it to, though? Himself. He did, Look, you notice that in the, in the story? Jesus didn't say, he didn't say aloud. He didn't go and tell everybody. He said it to himself. I'll do this. I'll big, build bigger barns. I'll save it. He's talking to himself. So when you say, oh, I get this job because it'll take care of my family. I'll get this job because it'll take care of my, you know, bills. My, 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 my. Is that how we think to ourselves? Let's be real. I'll take the more money because of what it do for who? I, I'm trying to get us there, y'all. I'm, I'm trying to push the cart. If we can get to the place of where it's, we live in that reality and say, God, I'm willing, I'm willing to be free from Egypt. I'm willing to eat the manna and quail for, for 40 years if you want me to. Time's up. Well, you don't have the stopwatch. He said, watch this verse 45, 24, 45. I love this verse. 
I want somebody to read it. Somebody read 45, 24, 45. Somebody read it. Read it loud. Read it loud and proud. Matthew 24, 45. Read it loud and proud. Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom the master has put in charge of the servants in his household to give them food at the proper time? In your household or his? Oh, his household. Who watch what he says? Who then is the faithful and wise servant? Guess what? Self-centered, God God do everything for me is unwise. God is providing for everyone. God is providing for the whole community is wisdom. Remember Ananias and Sapphira, they wanted to hold back. Remember what happened to them. When it, God was trying to provide for the whole community. Who then is the faithful and wise servant? Who can God put in charge of a message of a of a of a mission? Forget message and mission. Who can which one of us can say, God, put me in charge of this mission. I'll see it all the way through. And whatever wisdom I, I pick up, I give it back to, to I hand it out to others. Right. Because in the mission, you're leading somewhere. You're leading. You, you ain't just talking. Because the mission is the others. Let's see if the mission of others. This is what he says. Who can I put in charge of the servants in my household? To give them what? What do you want to give them? Food. Food at the proper time. Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom the master? We are trying to, uh, we we try a lot of times be like, y'all figure it out. No, we, that, that's why he gave teachers, pastors, apostles. All, that's why we need the type of people who've been in sitting up under the wisdom of God at his feet to come and tell us what we don't see. How did Jesus saw everything the father wanted him to see and he came to do what feed the children he came to let everybody know how to see oh man who then is the faithful and wise servant whom the master has put in charge of the servants in his household to give them food at the proper time it will be good for who It'll be good for that servant whose master finds him doing his own thing. Is that what it say? Doing his own thing? Yeah. Doing what I put you in charge of before I left. Let me ask a question real quick. Is time random? So time is not random. No. Are people random? Yes. <laughs> you you know what it you know what it say uh tossed to and fro by every wind kind of wind of teaching. Y'all heard that before? Yeah. It that means like one day I believe this, one day I believe that, one day I believe this, one day I believe that, one day I believe this, one day I believe that. It's you see you see how that go randomness. Go ahead, babe. I'm sorry. I was trying to tie everything together for my notes. So what I've gotten so far, we're having an experience similar to the Israelites. The Egyptians provided for the Israelites while in slavery. And as Americans, we are being provided for by the government or the institutions. Yes, we work, we work, we get earnings. But as you mentioned, we are not self sufficient. And just like God called the Israelites to the wilderness. He's also calling us to that experience where we forsake things 
that we have formerly been provided for. And if we take up that cross and take up that challenge, that is when the faith comes in. Because walking around every day and saying we have faith is garbage unless we go on that faith journey. And we can really now live it out and really see, do you really live by faith? Do you really trust that when you plant your own tomato seed in the ground, it's going to sprout and give you a tomato to eat? Am I following? Yeah, you following a hundred percent. You 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 okay. you breaking it down. Yeah, in its in the simplest form. And if we don't go on that faith experience and forsake Publix and Walmart when the Great Tribulation starts and the Antichrist comes, we are going to take the mark of the beast because we are used to Walmart and we are used to Publix and we are used to being provided for. And we've never had to go without. And we don't even like to fast one day. Yeah. So we could be trapping ourselves by saying God is providing for me in America when we're in Egypt, like the Israelites. Uh, All right, I'm my host, Nathan. Oh, thank you. Yeah, definitely. And 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 this is the encouragement for today is to get us to a truthful place. You see, when we get to the truthful place, we can grow. You know, the truthful place allows us, allows that room for growth. But when we are, we are under the cloak, it's like, um, it's under the cloak of like, I'm, I'm good. God got me. Right. It, it, that cloak right there is decept deceptive because the, the enemy is using it to make you feel like I'm close to God and we good. But like when you re really open his word and you start to see in his word how he even treated his servants, right? And how hard he was on his people, you know, that he called. And it's like, everything for me is feel good and comfort. And he takes care of me. Oh, I didn't, you know, he made sure I ate three meals today, but the person overseas don't even get one. You see, it's, it's deceptive. It's very deceptive. We don't know what God really is about until we have the faith experience. Then we start to see God wait till the last second to do something for you. If he wants to. Or he'll let you perish for his name's sake. Be persecuted for his name's sake. These are not our testimonies. Our testimonies, they're all good. If that makes, they're all good. Like he does great things for me. You know, and watch this. Most of the stuff that we say God do for us, I'm going to be honest. It's basic common sense human stuff. Like when we say, oh, God gave me wisdom to brush my teeth. It's like, well, Where's the when God give you wisdom is actually the wisdom is for the community. The wisdom is for the others. The wisdom is for that purpose. Like when we get there, we good with God. When we're not there, we just talk. We just like smoke. You know, that's it. Not even a fire, just the smoke from the fire. That's it. I'm going to keep reading. It said it would be good 40 to 24, 40, Matthew 24, 46. It would be good for that servant whose master finds him doing so when he returns. I know a lot of people who wants to do something for God. But as soon as they find out what that is, I've even told people things they should be doing. Right. I told people what they should do. Right. I've said it because I know I know what you should be doing. Does that mean somebody going to do it? Especially if it's something they don't like. Or if it's too hard in their mind. Guess what? Let's be true. Let's be honest. I've lived this life for uh, that life. I understand it. Never think thinking everything's too hard. I know what it, I know what that's like to think if something is too big to build is too hard for me to do. That's too big for me to build. So it's too hard for who me to do. It's a true thing. And until we get into truth, 
the truth of how we actually are with God, our life stays the same. We are in la la land. You in fairy tale land. And that's why a lot of the world think this re the religion of Christianity is cuckoo. They do. They think a lot of it is just cuckoo because you're not actually having a faith experience. You're talking about what you read without the faith experience. And so when we do that, we do sound cuckoo. Faith is, they should see what you're doing because you know what he said he want the Israelites to be? When people see them, watch this, let me go back real quick. Remember Solomon? <laughs> Why did they people come from afar? Because of what he what? Said or did? Right. And when they saw what he did and then they heard what he said. Huh? We all got it. They was coming from everywhere. Then they saw what he did. And then when they heard the wisdom coming out of his mouth, it was God. Said, huh? Magnified. It, come on now. They didn't want to leave. They say, I want to be in communi communi communion with this guy. Why didn't the disciples want to lead Jesus? They saw what he was about and then what he said. It was both. They worked together. His intention for Israel was when people saw that the laws that he gave them and the wisdom that they lived under, that they will want to be like that. That's what he wanted. Did they ever get there? Are we there? <laughs> We just in the system blended in every aspect of a system. We just blend in into the work environment. We blend in socially. We blend in politically. We blend in religiously. We just blend it in. And there's nothing that's, that people can stop and say, wow, look at what God is doing over there. It's nothing to be amazed at. And that's what God actually wants. Watch this. And it's not about material possession. We live in a world. Watch this, y'all. We live in a world and a country right now where if you build your own house and grow your own food, you go viral on the Internet. Y'all didn't hear what I just said, did you? Did y'all just hear what I said? Yeah. Yes. If you build. Go ahead. Go ahead, Becky. I didn't hear you. And do so it's amazing to them yeah i agree and this this is how god wants us to be we look we in a society where that's wow you really grow all your food and you really the land provides for you and blah 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 and how and then now people want the information and then when they come talk to you what should come out your mouth the wisdom of god the wisdom of God should flow out of your mouth then. Yeah. Anybody ready to live in the truth now? I hope so. Man. Yes. <laughs> Man. That's all I can say. It sets us free. We free from the verbiage that we tell brothers and sisters of how God did so amazing in your life this week. Forget that junk. Let me see it. Forget telling me how amazing God did. Let me see that. Let me see it by your obedience to what he actually says. You see, it's, it's a whole different ball game then. See, words can compel people. Truth keeps them. Words compel. Words can compel, can convince, can, you know, all that kind of stuff. But truth of how he wants us to live is actually what holds and, and keeps. All I keep hearing is truth. Truth. If you hold to my truth, it'll set you free if you hold on to it. We're not free because we don't hold on to it. We hear it and it sounds good. And it sounds right. 
And it sounds like something I desire to do. But it's too hard to do because of how I think. All right. Verse 47. We just did 46, 24, 47. Truly, I tell you, he will put him in charge. Of all. Of what? All his what? When you don't worry about possessions, God will put you in charge of all of his possessions. Because he know even when he puts you in charge, you still not trying to possess it. Y'all just heard that? He just said it. For, when I see you don't care about your possessions... I can put you in charge of every one of my possessions and I don't even have to worry that you're still trying to possess it. I don't even have to, it's not even a thought that come across my mind because I've watched you. I've watched you. I can put you in charge. Let's keep reading. But suppose that servant is wicked. The truth allows us to not be wicked no more. Every one of us have a wicked mindset until we run into God. See, the word wicked a lot of times, it, it comes off like, you know, slo slobbing from the mouth, salivating from the mouth. It comes off like that. Wicked. A wicked mindset is just a selfish mindset. That's all it is. He, he'll call you a worker of iniquity. See, wickedness is just self-centered. That's all it is. It's just a self-centered mindset. That's all wickedness is. Because everything comes from there. Your pride, your ego, your what your lust, your greeds, your uh, you know, yourself is about you. I see you, AA. I see you. But suppose that servant is self centered <laughs> and says to himself, Y'all see, it's a lot of conversations we have with ourselves that makes us even more wicked. Then he says, and says to himself, My master is staying away a long time. And he then begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with drunkards. He then begins to beat his fellow servants. He don't feed them no more. He beating them. And to eat and drink with drunkards. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour he is not aware of. So as the moment you are, you say, I love you, God, blah, 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 blah. And God becomes your master one day. And then you go back into self-centeredness, being a self-centered uh, uh, citizen of this nation. The moment you go back and do that, God can be showing up on a day you're not expecting him to show up. He will cut him into pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The last thing I'm going to cover. And we're going to start to close. What should I be doing? Let's go to John 21 first. John 21. What should I be doing? Yo, this is so beautiful, these, these scriptures right here. John 21. In John 21, we're going to start with verse 15. When Jesus finished eating, I mean, when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said what? 
Feed my lambs. Feed my lambs. What did we just read? What did a good servant do for his master? That's what we own, Lance, right now. We're going to talk about it. You feed them whatever the master tells you to give them. You feed them whatever the master. Look, it ain't your truth that you feed people. It's whatever the master wants you to feed them. Isn't that what we just read? What if the master need them to have water today, milk tomorrow, baby food the next day, meat the next day? And you are so stuck in what you've learned that you think you need to tell everybody what you learned and not what the master wants them to hear and for them to re for them to ingest. But you you do you, watch this. You regurgitate what you learn from a self-centered place. When you're selfless, Jesus knew everything. Did Jesus tell everybody everything? No. Jesus told him, he said, all I'm saying is what the father say. That's all I'm doing. Everything you hear me say is what the father say. For instance, just a little truth. I wanted to go in a different direction today with the Bible study, right? That's the truth. It's many times I've wanted to go somewhere and God be like, no, nah, this is what I need to, to be spoken. It's a difference because when you self-centered, it's about, well, this is y'all know how many times we done started a series and then we don't finish them. Y'all, y'all notice that, but watch this. Let me tell you how premeditated. I mean, how self-centered um, premeditation is. If someone say for the next two months, I'm only talking about this. This is the series for the next two months. Y'all just see what I did. Do I allow the Holy Spirit not to have room to tell me what to do? Yeah. So I'm going to feed you for the next two months, whatever I have determined what you should get. The Bible tells us to follow God daily. Jesus daily had to do what the father was telling him. You Let's understand this. Jesus, The father didn't tell Jesus things for him to say two months from now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, because the father knew he, who he was running into tomorrow. So he said, go over here. And you can stay, yeah, you can stay there for two days. Go over there. Everybody just understood that, right? We have to be careful of that. We can feed people what we've studied, opposed to what God wants us to give people. I'm going to keep growing. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. Feed my lambs and take care of my sheep. What are those two things, y'all? What does that sum up? What are those two things? What is feeding and taking care of somebody? Service, hospitality, right? How can you be hospitable to somebody? You bring them in where? So that's how you hospitable. So we learned later that Peter, did later Peter and them go build a whole community? And then they was concerned about the widows wasn't eating. And Peter was like, look, we're going to get seven dudes with the Holy Spirit that's going to take care of the widows that's not eating and the people that's not eating. Was that his mindset? I hope we hear. The third time he said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time. Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where? What? You went where you want it. Y'all hear it now? Everybody hearing it? We summing it up now. 
You went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. And Pe this is how Peter died. Because once you surrender to God, he leads you to places you do not want to go. If God gives somebody a message to tell you to do something, it's usually something you do not want to do. Go to the cross. What? Go to the cross. <laughs> Jesus said it's to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. I, so, Peter, if you love me, I need you for the rest of your life to live a selfless life, a hospitable, communal life. And at the end of that, Peter, you're going to be led to a place you didn't even want to go to. But you will go. And it's going to glorify me. Jesus said it's to indicate the kind of life de death. We not, hey, Americans, my fellow Americans, I'm going to act like, yeah, yeah presidential uh, speech. <laughs> my fellow Americans, <laughs> listen, y'all. Every time we feel like we don't want to do something, we use our freedom not to do it. Every time we don't want to do something, we are using our freedom not to do it. And you know what we start to do? I need to hear from God myself. You know what the Israelites didn't do? What we did with this? We're so. We're so we're so mentally calculated now. See, Moses, when he got the instructions from God and told the Israelites how they should be moving, right? Is that right? So if you if you say I surrender to you, Lord, that means I can hear your servant. Most of us are just doing things we don't want. Like we just doing things. We're random. We're not like God. We're random people. And the more random you are, the more you're going to keep on using the Holy Spirit as your cop out. The Holy Spirit becomes the cop out. Like, oh, I need to hear from the spirit. You know, most people think if I just do this, raise my hands and close my eyes and squint my face like this. Ooh, he in the spirit. No, I'm not. I'm in the spirit when I obey God. I'm not in the spirit because I can. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Amen. I, that That's not in the spirit. In the spirit is obedience. You know, the Bible says John was in the spirit on the Lord's day and the Lord came to him and started talking to him and telling him to write stuff down. Who remembers that? Go read Revelation 1. He said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and the Lord came to me. And he told me to write these things down. He didn't say lift up your hands and, and oh, Lord, now I can feel your presence. And then go back to my self-centered lifestyle. We are deceived here. We are so deceived. That's why you struggle mentally. That's why you confuse. That's why the gray clouds stay over you. You are deceived. And Jesus came to reveal himself, the truth, so we're no longer are deceived by our self-centered ways. Go ahead, uh, Brother Alex, Sister Becky. I saw your hand. Go ahead. You know, I it just put it into a whole different perspective. And I know this, but needed to be reminded. Yeah. And, and the flood is so immense now. The flood is so there because everybody can, we all can grab a phone now and just say, God told me something. And it sounds so good and motivating and encouraging. We can just do it now. But when you look at someone's life, do they live a selfless life? That's the only way we know now. Do you live a selfless life? 
The selfless life is the only way now that we can discern what God is actually doing because that's what Jesus did. Because I can come on and be like, God told me to start this channel and tell everybody about me and what he did for me. Tell how to build how he's going to build me. Y'all hear what I'm doing? Let me ask y'all something. Is that biblical? No. Has God ever did that in the Bible? No. You see how, how easy it is, though? Because now I can make my whole ministry about what my old life used to be. So why we don't see God doing that, though? Because he's he's wants you to get out of you and focus on this. You are you are limited. You're not eternal. So people are only going to be able to eat limited from you if you only talk about you. You have a limited time. You are limited. But when you glorify God and you lift him up and you lift Jesus up and you lift, 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 lift. There's an eternal amount of wisdom, knowledge and understanding anybody can get. I'm going to finish this out. It says. Uh, uh, I forgot where I just was. <laughs> OK, yeah. Jesus said this to indicate to the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Peter turned and saw that the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. This was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? Jesus answered, oh, he's so awesome. If I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. You're going to go to your death and John right here, John going to, John going to, in, in AD 95, John going to write the book of Revelation. If I want him to remain alive while all the rest of y'all got martyred, what is that to you? Come follow me. Y'all see how God worked? He different. Yes. He had already carved out what was for John and what was for Peter. Now, last verse I'm going to read is 1 Peter 5, 2. 1 Peter 5, 2, I'm going to close down. <clears throat> I'm a, I'm a, um, I'm actually going to read one through four to the elders among you. This is Peter writing this. So after he done had this encounter with, watch what he says to the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder and a witness of Christ. What sufferings, not selfishness, his sufferings who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Watch what he says. Remember what, what Jesus told Peter, feed my lambs, take care of my sheep, feed my sheep. Watch what he tells. Watch what Peter writes here. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care. Watching over them. Not because you must. Huh? What did it say? Who got it? What is. Huh? Go ahead. Say it again. Say it loud. What? Because you what? If you do it because you must, you just a, a hired help. That's it. But because you are willing. See, everything flows from there. The willingness. But because you are willing as God wants you to be, he just wants you to be willing. He's going to teach you how to farm, build, plant, uh, teach children, raise this. Teach what well, he's gonna teach you everything if you're willing, and guess what? Whatever wisdom he gives you, he's gonna say, Now you could take care of the flock, now you know how to raise them. But if you're self centered, you're gonna tell the flock, Yeah, go try this out, yeah, go spend four years in school and do this and try that and try this and try that until you figure it out. You see, if we're gonna be See, we are we are the shepherds. Hey, if you're a believer, that means you're a shepherd. That means you're a light. If you're a light, you are the person he's saying, take care of the flock. You are it. And watch what he says. Not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve. 
not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. You see how this works now? Ah, we have arrived to the end. <laughs> We've made it. <laughs> I really hope we got the message today. God becomes your provider when you are willing for him to be your provider. God becomes your provider when you are willing for him to become your provider. The willingness is everything. Or we can just stay how we are. How many people want to stay how they are? Anybody want to stay how they are? Oh. oh. I And uh, this is how we're going to be accountable. If you see somebody still operating self-centered, keep reminding them that's selfish. That thought process is selfish. You're self-centered. And then and then uh, allow God to use your words. Don't be afraid when you hear people doing self-centered things or seeing it and they're supposed to be your brother and sister and you say you love. Patiently and kindly bring them back. You're off. You're wrong. It's okay to do that. Bring them back. Uh, I can't answer that right now. Sister Sheila, I'm about to close down YouTube and Facebook. Uh, I don't think that's very important to be real, but the result that God got from telling him that, I put it like that, the result that God got from that is what matters. Yo, I'm going to um, shut down YouTube and Facebook. Uh, I appreciate you guys for joining us today for another Sabbath Bible study. Please understand the uh, land you're living in, what God is calling you actually to. Don't play uh, the, the mental game uh, that God is my everything and nothing to other people. You, know, you understand what I'm saying when I say that because we talked about it. Uh, I just want us to be aware that Self self-centeredness is part of our sinful nature. That's what children have when they're born and stuff. It's about them. Feed me, feed me, feed me, give me, give me. I want, I want, take me to this store, buy me this, do this. You know, that's it's a it's a natural fallen aspect that we have in our sinful nature. That's just what it is. So be aware that being born again means like I need you to relearn everything, like all of it. So with that being said, spend a lot of time with God today, a little time with self, peace, grace, and love.